Hi everyone. Even if you're a non-mathematician, you've probably heard of Fermat's last theorem. For more than 300 years, it was one of the great unsolved mysteries of mathematics. Now, Fermat did a lot of other important work in maths in areas like analytical geometry and probability. But it's a comment that he left in the margin of a book that wasn't discovered till after his death, for which he's best remembered. Fermat was born in Beaumont de la Maine in 1601. Not much is known about his early years, but his family was well off and Fermat got a good education. He attended the University of Toulouse before moving to Bordeaux, where in the second half of the 1620s, he did his first serious mathematical work and started corresponding with eminent French mathematicians. He never became a professional mathematician himself and always pursued the subject in his spare time, eventually earning the nickname the Prince of Amateurs. From Bordeaux, Fermat went to Orléans, where he studied law at the university there. By 1631, he'd become a lawyer and government official in Toulouse. And because of the office he now held, he was enabled to change his name from Pierre Fermat to Pierre de Fermat. Although employed as a senior government official, Fermat somehow managed to find time to do an astonishing amount of important maths for which he never sought any acclaim or acknowledgement. In fact, he published only one important manuscript in his entire lifetime and even then used fake initials. When Gilles de Roberval offered to edit and publish some of his works, Fermat replied, whatever of my works is judge worthy of publication, I do not want my name to appear there. Most of his results are known through letters to friends, notes in book margins, and challenges to other mathematicians to find proofs for theorems he devised. Fermat was one of the founders with René Descartes of algebraic geometry and with Blaise Pascal of probability theory. His work on the maxima and minima of curves and tangents to them was seen by Isaac Newton as a starting point for calculus but his greatest love was number theory. In 1640, while studying perfect numbers, Fermat wrote to Marin Mersenne that, if p is a prime number, then 2p divides 2 to the p minus 2. Shortly after, he expanded this into what is now called Fermat's Little Theorem. This states that if p is a prime number, then for any number a, a to the p minus a must be divisible by p. Although it can't be used to test if a number is prime, it's very useful for deciding if a number isn't prime. Fermat didn't himself provide a proof. Leonard Euler was the first to publish a proof in 1736, although Gottfried Leibniz left virtually the same proof in an unpublished manuscript from sometime before 1683. Of course, Fermat is best remembered for what's become known as Fermat's last theorem. He stated it in 1637 in the form of a note scribbled in the margin of his copy of the ancient Greek text Arithmetica by Diophantus. The note was found after his death, which was in 1665, and the original is now lost. However, a copy was included in the appendix to a book published by Fermat's son. The note read, It is impossible to write a cube as a sum of two cubes, a fourth power as a sum of fourth powers, and in general any power beyond the second as a sum of two similar powers. For this, I have found a truly wonderful proof, but the margin is too small to contain it. Fermat claimed that the Diophantine equation x to the n plus y to the n equals z to the n has no integer solutions for n greater than 2. It turns out he was right, but the proof had to wait 350 years and involved such advanced techniques 
virtually none of which existed in the 17th century, that it seems very unlikely that Fermat really had found an elementary proof. My own feeling is that he probably suspected it was true and was issuing a challenge to future mathematicians to find a proof. If so, it worked, eventually. Fermat's last theorem, now truly a theorem, was finally proved correct by the English mathematician Andrew Wiles in 1994. In order to get to it, however, Wiles had to draw on and extend several ideas at the core of modern mathematics. In particular, he tackled the Shimura Taniyama Veil conjecture, which provides links between algebraic geometry and complex analysis. The conjecture dates back to 1955 when it was published in Japanese as a research problem by the late Yutaka Taniyama. Goro Shimura of Princeton and Andre Veil of the Institute for Advanced Study provided key insights in formulating the conjecture, which proposes a special kind of equivalence between the mathematics of objects called elliptic curves and the mathematics of certain motions in space. Wiles's proof of Fermat's last theorem was no more than a byproduct of his deep inroads into proving the Shimura Taniyama Veil conjecture. For all its fame, Fermat's last theorem is little more than a curiosity, which, unlike, say, the Riemann hypothesis, doesn't open the way to other obvious breakthroughs in mathematics. Thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll look forward to seeing you again very soon to discover more maths.